Thank you, Maria. So, you know, uh, first and foremost, I really, really want to thank the patients that I work with. Truly, I, I really mean it from the bottom of my heart because you cannot do anything without willing people trying new things, right? There are several of you here in the audience that I've observed that are part of our patients that have helped me develop this protocol because science has to advance, okay? Technology has to advance, thinking has to advance, and intelligence has to advance, and we can't do the same things we did 10 years ago. It's just not going to work in the future. So we gotta reinvent ourselves, reinvent new things all the time, which means that you gotta be thinking all the time. Otherwise, you're gonna be left behind because technology is moving so rapidly, right? So I wanna thank specifically patients here who have given me permission to do a few things. And I'm gonna show this because they've given me permission to do so. And I want you guys to watch this person uh, on the TV, okay? I want you to see this person, she's in the audience. And I just want to take a minute for you guys to just observe her. So obviously, this is before. This is that. So, what what do you guys see there? What what kind of changes do you guys see there? Wow. Can anybody see, everybody see this? Well, it doesn't look good. Do you guys want to take a look? Because you guys need to see this. All right. I'm going to show you something else here. Take a look at that. And I really want you guys to see this. If you cannot see it, please get up and watch it. And I really want to thank you. Go ahead. I'll go over it. I'll go over it. So I really want to thank her because it takes a lot of courage for her to give me permission to allow me to share this with everybody. One of the things in aesthetic surgery, right, is that people want to be secretive because they don't want other people to know. But it takes courage to be out there to kind of be a pioneer, not only as a doctor, or as a surgeon, but also as a patient. I want to thank her because she's made, actually I've learned a tremendous amount from her because she's one of the best patients I have. A lot of everybody is, but she said, Dr. K, I trust you, do whatever you need to do to make me look good. Wow. That is the best type of patient that I could have, mm -hmm. right? Because I don't have shackles, I don't have limitations, I have the luxury of time, because one of the things, if I've learned something in 13 years of practice so far, I work at the at Vanderbilt University, I trained at the Cleveland Clinic in Ohio, I taught, I did research, I killed a lot of rats, one thing I learned, right, one thing I really learned is that surgery is a process. There are no magic bullets, there's no quick solutions. Surgery is a process. Healthcare is a process. So you need to be patient, you need to think through problems and treat them. So in this particular person's case, there's a lot of things that are different, right? The number one thing that you, I want you guys to notice is the texture of the skin, right? So as a surgeon, it's humbling, you know? There's limitations, there's just always limitations. What can I do? What can I do? There's nothing I can do surgically to improve skin, right? I could pull it, tighten it, I could do all kinds of stuff, but I just cannot change the native architecture of skin. And there's been tons of tools since the 1980s, right? There's so many tools available. Lasers, there's you know, microneedling devices, there's all kinds of uh, radio frequency devices, there's all kinds of stuff, but they're all limiting because you can only do one thing, right? So you gotta understand, so you gotta first say, what are the different things in this skin that are a problem? There's pigment problems, there's textural problems, there's pore problems, there's fine lines, there's deep lines, there's volume lines, there's a whole bunch of things. If you think about it, like if you make a nice recipe, you need a bunch of ingredients. You cannot just put meat and expect it to be good, right? You gotta add a lot of spices and everything else. So medicine and plus is the same thing because you need to target these very, very differently. And then you have to think about it, and, and I'm gonna stop here and show you a few concepts that uh, I wrote down that you guys should, that I think about, and I think uh, you guys need to understand the journey of why we got here and how we got here.
What is this person's age? Uh, she's, she's 50. It's 50. Is she a person of Florida? Oh, yes. But no, not always, but part of it is Georgia. But, uh, How long did it take to get from HD Jack to that? I'll go over it. I'll go over it. Did it hurt? <laughs> oh no, we give them a lot of alcohol. <laughs> That's a funny question, we'll still get one. Yes. Okay, so, so the first thing I ask myself is, right, you know, can I lay down my knife at some point in the future? I always think about this, you know, because as surgeons are always taught to just cut and sew, cut and sew all the time, because if you remember from the 80s and 90s, the only thing available was a facelift. So you just cut stuff and pull us tight. If you remember breast surgery, right? You do your mastectomy and take everything out because you had no other options. And everybody just does the same thing. So I'm thinking now, and it's very possible, is there a day in the near future where I can just lay down my knife and not do real surgery? Well, interesting thought. I don't know, but it's an interesting thought. And then if I do so, can I get good results? Similar to you know surgery, because surgery has limitations, like we talked about, right? Surgery can only do certain things. It cannot do everything. So if I put down the knife, can I get great outcomes? And then the next question from that is that if I want to do that, do I have the tools I need to do what I do what I need to do? Do I have all the different components? You know, can I correct skin texture? Can I correct you know loose skin that has jowls or neck skin or whatever the skin is? Can I increase volume? Can I do all of these things with, that, with this toolkit and is it available today? And it's certainly a lot more available today than even two, three years ago. And then you have to understand, so if I lay down my knife, if I have some tools and if I can get good outcomes, what are the types of tissues that I can apply this technology to, right? Can I apply it to the face, to the neck, to the breast, to the buttock, to the abdomen? I don't know. How, where's the limitation? And because every area that you have to treat is very different. So you have to know what tissue types you can do it in, right? So that's another question that you gotta ask yourself. Then the next question you have to ask yourself is that, well, am I drinking a lot of Kool-Aid, right? You know, because <laughs> if you're trying to innovate, nobody believes you, really, because you're out there all on your own because everybody wants to do what they've been taught and what they know because they know and they feel comfortable. If you step out of that comfort zone, you're all alone. Right, then there's a tendency to drink your own Kool-Aid a lot because you want it to be true, because you are so passionate about it, but you gotta be real, you gotta step back and say, you know what, can I really objectify this? And that's why you gotta thank patients because without them, you cannot do this, right? I cannot create this in my own mind. I need willing, participating patients who really value progressive thinking. And they're taking a big leap of faith. They're, they're taking a big leap of faith and there's a lot of trust involved here. So then you have to say, you know what, can I be honest with myself? Can I be honest with the patients and really ask them, is this a good outcome? Can we grade them? If I grade them, can I grade it a certain way and does a patient grade it a different way or are they correlating to each other? Because what's the point if I grade it at a 10 and the patient grades it at a five, it's no correlation, right? As a matter of fact, if the patient grades it at a 10, I grade it at a five, then we are doing something good. That's what we really want. But we'll take an equality. Like if I grade an eight and the patient grades an eight, that's good or seven or nine or whatever, we're very close, right? So that's what we gotta do. And then you have to know, what are my limitations, right? Can I really do this on everybody or anybody? Or are there limitations? Are there injuries that I'll cause? Are there problems that I can create? All of these things you gotta understand, are there limitations to this stuff? Is there an age limit? Yeah, that's another limitation. Is there an age limit? That's a perfect question, that's another one. And can I do it on a 90 year old? Can I do it on a 20 year old? <laughs> I have a question. Yeah. So if somebody who is younger, obviously this is like a big difference. So what would it do to you to do it younger today? Right. So, so I'm going to actually show you the procedure in a few more case studies and a couple of patients of here. I'm going to have them talk about it as well. But so, you know, it depends on. Like, let's just kind of be specific because there's so many different things to come to. Let's talk about the face of a 20 year old that you're asking about, right? So if a 20 year old or a younger person has issues, more than likely they won't have really wrinkles. 
right? Mm -hmm. More than likely, they have good hydration or health or whatever, right? Maybe they have pigment problems. Maybe they have some moles or whatever else, but it's really not the same type of tissue problem that an 80-year-old or 70-year-old would have. Acne scars, right? They, they could have skin, traumatic injuries or whatever those might be. So their, their problem spectrum is very, very different than an older person. But the principles of healing, the principles of regenerative medicine, the principles of the technology, how they work on it, it's gonna be similar. So I'm not gonna use the same thing I'm gonna do for somebody in their 70s that I would do for the 20s. The goal here again, like I said, is you need your tools a set of tools where but the concepts stay the same meaning i have to treat texture i have to treat pigment i have to treat hydration i have to treat wrinkles i have to treat all of those things and i know how to do those with the tools i have but i may not need to use everything on everybody so what the results are is that they're not going to react as much as a 70 year old would because they don't have such damaged skin so would it be like preventative yes you would be pre so that that's where we're going so you know the goal is to be proactive instead of being reactive. Yeah. So I have it on a slide, but we can go advanced here. So the results we're seeing is about two to two weeks or so, they already notice a difference, but it's peaking around four to five weeks in general. So we don't know, right? Because this is all new stuff. I mean, I don't know how long it's gonna last and that's the real answer, but I do know this, you know, from science is that you are architecturally changing the skin. I'm not just putting makeup on skin. I'm literally changing the skin and providing everything it needs to maximally heal itself, right? So I'm expecting, I'll know in a year or two, right. based on these good patients who have been cooperative, right. how they're going to be in six months or eight months, and I can ask that patient a year from now. But right now, it's been preliminary, and they've all been very, very good. Dr. So, so the treatments, the number of treatments, uh, you know, we're we are again developing a new protocol, but it's a universal recommendation in our office that any skin treatments that I do, I recommend at least three treatments. And the reason is there's a very, very fine line between safety and efficacy. And it's very tempting to do more. And I can, you know, many patients can attest, I always hold them back. I tell them, no, you cannot do this. Well, I have a wedding in two weeks, I need to do this. No, you cannot do it. You know, because you're gonna cross that line. So that's why we tell people that you gotta do it at least three times because it needs that time to heal. So every time you injure tissue, which is treatment, you gotta let it heal. What's the downtime? What's the downtime? So, so the downtime, what we're observing in these first group of patients that we've done, has been about a day and a half to two days. And they can, most people have been able to, not everybody, most people have been able to put on some makeup in about two days and go out. And some people actually went to work the very next day. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna have somebody just explain it. Nira, could you stand up? You are one of the persons who've done this. So tell us about your experience in your downtime and everything else. Um, actually, I didn't have any downtime. I went out that night um, and I went to work the next day. And you know, everybody noticed something was done good the next day um, because the inflammatory process had started so it started looking good already but no downtime at all she's a she's a nurse practice nurse from crna so she's in the health field so she knows this and they use terminology but you know it's a good person to ask because she's in the health field you know, so. yeah. The procedure, this one called the art facial. Let me just explain what an art facial is first of all. We didn't even talk about it. Art facial, ART, stands really, when I talk to doctors, I describe it as autologous regenerative therapy. Okay? Autologous means using your own body tissues or liquids or blood or whatever else. Regenerative means that you're growing your own stuff, like lizards grow their own tail, right? And <laughs> therapy, 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 like you're treating it. So it's called art facial. But when I talk to patients, we've, we've decided that we want to be a little bit, you know, kind of more, uh, you know, kind of connected to patients. So we call it advanced regenerative therapy. So our patient is what it's actually called. So what's the time span between three treatments? So, yeah, I'll, I'll actually show you guys pictures of, you know, day two, day three, what it looks yeah, like. 
Yeah. So the procedure, somebody else asked us, sorry about that. The procedure, we're getting better at it. When we first did it, it took us a long time. But there's five steps to the procedure, and I'll go over them and show a video of it. But the procedure now takes about two hours. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, so excellent question, right? So I hope you guys heard that. How do you guys know what you're giving is good stuff, right? And just think about this for a minute. I was speaking to a few people the other day, and this is what's out in the market today. That's why we never introduced it in the marketplace at all so far. I heard literally a patient in my office who said she went to a med spa and they gave her whatever they extracted in a little jar for her to put it on a cream at home. This is the state of healthcare in the United States today because it's over-dramatized, over-marketed, and over-simplified because everybody wants to do it because the technical knowledge needed to do the technical stuff is not that complicated. But they don't know the science behind it at all, and it's actually harming people. So, so you know, how do we know? Because we have done a lot of basic science research to understand what the proteins are in the plasma. We've developed, not we, but the company has has developed technology. Uh, do we have a canister over here? Oh, we get one? Uh, it's, it, was, it was tested for a very, very long time in North Korea for a long time, so we know what the contents are in there, and you can actually measure them. And you can actually see and extract stuff out of the plasma and kind of see what's going on. And the one thing that we're you know, kind of trying to figure out is that do these people who want to do this treatment, do they need any free treatment testing to make sure they don't have any communicable diseases? But we're not using your stuff on other people, it's just for you, right? So one of the slides I have here, is it safe, right? Is it, is it, can I do this safely? That's what you're getting at, right? And is it effective? That's what you're getting at. So we are not utilizing anything over the counter. We're not using anything manufactured. We're actually doing it at the point of care with their own stuff. And we get a good health history so far. And if you have any you know, conditions that are not good, then we obviously have to screen you out. How do you know your face? So this is all done topically with the numbing medication. Numbing oh, yeah. no, shot. no shot. So far, no shot. Nobody is needed. Yes, sir. You mentioned titration and wrinkles and some other properties of the skin. Do you use a different tool for each of those? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. What, what and I'll go over that. I'll go over that. Is there a minimum age for you to so, so I don't think so because, you know, obviously, you know, I have actually, I wish the patient was here. I have a 94 year old patient that I take care of. She's one of us. I love her. Uh, I wish she was here. She was here at our last event. We have another question right here. I think we're past that at this stage. Okay. Two months ago we were, and the reason we waited to host this event today is because we did our due diligence. Actually, we kept track of everybody we've done this treatment to. We looked at their sequential treatments and their outcomes, their response. We actually graded them to kind of make sure that they were, we're not drinking our own Kool-Aid and there's no, been no problems, there's been safety concerns. And so at this point of time, and we are excited to do this because we are past that stage of experimentation. We're going to improve it further. We're going to advance it, but the core technology is already there. If you have a scar, how long do you think you should wait to see this practice? So, you know, I could go on in very, very depth on that, on that, but I'll try to be very brief here. So if you create an injury, scar, right? What you're referring to is a scar after it healed. But truly, the best time to treat something is at the time of the injury. Because you can, you can begin the modulation of tissue right at that spot. That's why it's done at the point of care. So right now, sometimes, when I do a facelift or whatever else, I laser right over it, right at the same time. Right now, if I had an opportunity, I inject stuff like the, the stuff we're doing right, right at the same time. Because you want to modulate healing when it happens. 17 so far. <laughs> if you're working with old stuff, does it take longer to... <laughs> 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 
You know, it's amazing. I think Greg may have actual numbers, but the amount of regenerative cells that a body has is just mind boggling. Oh, it's just it's like millions, it's millions dormant. and millions. It's, like it's just hanging out. out. Yeah, it's just hanging out. It needs some simulation. simulation. So, Greg, how many how many parasites or stem cells can you extract from fat, for example? So, in every mill, in every mf or cc of fat, there are four million cells. Oh, I've got loads of that. There's a million fat cells. There's three million stem cells. So. Is there anyone that shouldn't have this? So the answer to your question is, I think it may be more advantageous to older folks because you know there's more regeneration happening. Younger people may not need, you know, because they're already good, but older older patients may actually do better. Yes, Terry. Someone mentioned something about numbing. I, I'm on my second procedure here, going on to my third. And ooh, I'm going to have to leave questions. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. But, um, you, should, you don't even need the numbing. And I, I'm not an easy patient, but it's so comfortable every every step of the procedure. What does it feel like? It's, it's, it's almost relaxing. I mean, is it like, I don't know the name of the, the heat, the therm. So, yeah, Dr. Hassan is going to have us bring out one machine at a time so you can actually see it, but he did speak about the canister that we use, which is the filter. This is where the blood goes in, it gets spun, and then the serum with the growth factor is separated, and that's what we use. Please don't open it, these are expensive, but I will allow you to at least take a look at it, so it's not oh, cool. Am I understanding? Yes. 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 She's a tough patient, but a very real patient because she won't let you slide with anything. She won't let you slide with anything, but that's why I love her so much because she challenges you and she wants you to get better because it's not enough. So you cannot get a free pass and I thank her for that. I really do because I learned a lot from her. So if you take a look at this space and look at the mouth area, right? It's, it's been one of those areas that has been very, very tough for me to treat and I've talked to all my colleagues all over the country. How can I treat this? Because it's a common problem. I have another patient here who has the same type of problem. And you know, I've done lasers on it, unidimensional, uni only one dimensional. Helps a little bit, but not really. I've done radio frequency on it alone. Helps a little bit, but not really. I've done microneedling alone, unidimensional. Helps a little bit, but not really. But what's the next level? You know, what can I do, right? So in this case, again, this is one treatment of the art facial called the advanced regenerative therapy facial. Five steps again. The first step, we've already modified it, is that the week, if people really want to do it well and correctly, we bring people in the week before, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and they do what we call a radiofrequency topical treatment, which is very, very comfortable to just heat up the tissues to allow those cells to be ready. Right to kind of start to work already before you do the treatment. How sensitive are we to the sun? After the treatment, you mean? Yes. Well, you know, when you do any skin treatment, you should avoid sun for a good three, four, five weeks. Wow. That's just generally. You can do that one day of the entire face. It have to be done like fresh. No, no, no. We do the whole face. What are the possible side effects and how are they reversible? Sorry? What are the possible side effects and are they reversible? Yeah. So the question was again about safety. What are the side effects? The side effects are you could burn somebody if you're not if you're not careful and you overdo things at the same time, right? You could maybe react to something, but we're not using anything external uh, uh, you know from uh, 
uh, sorry, we're, we're not using anything external from uh, uh, you know the body to uh, to do anything. But the biggest downside probably is to cause scarring because you overdo things. And the second thing is that if you do dark skin tones, like the patient who just stood up, you could cause pigmentation problem. So the big two biggest concerns for me are scarring and causing pigmentation problems in darker skin patients. But other than that, in the 17 patients we've done so far, we haven't seen any adverse outcomes. Did you have skin grafts, previous problems? Did that Actually, it may be helpful. It may be helpful, right? Because, you know, the question again is that if there are skin grafts, like in cancer or some other reason you have it on the face, can you do something about it? As a matter of fact, again, thinking through this deeply, it may help it because a skin graft, when it's taken from elsewhere in the body and put on, there's nothing besides this very, very thin skin. There's no, there's no glands in it. I mean, they're dead because you kind of cut it out from elsewhere, it has to come back plus. So there's very sparse things there to look good because it always look like a patch, right? Like a mosaic. So this may actually introduce new things that may make it actually better. Mm -hmm. What about dark spots? So Nero is a perfect example of that, right? You know, the patient who just spoke, dark spots improve. That's what we've seen because this treatment has five steps. Let me just briefly go over it. The first one was what we talked about, the radio frequency, get it ready. You don't have to do it if you don't have the time. It's just a recommendation. You'll still get good results if you don't do it the week before. <coughs> the treatment actually starts with what we call cleaning up the dead layer of cell skin, right? That's called microblading or microdermabrasion. You just want to make sure that you get the dust off the skin first before you do anything. That's the first thing. The second thing we do is the third we smooth again because we really want to use the radio frequency energy to start to work to create new blood vessels. Start to dislodge those what we call parasites to start healing because they're sitting there and kind of waiting to do something. They need some injury to start doing something because they don't know what to do. The third thing we do is a carbon dioxide laser. <coughs> because we want the surface to have a very controlled level of injury. Because you need to create injury for it to heal, otherwise the body is not gonna heal, it doesn't know what to do. So we're trying to control the depth and the level of injury with a surface treatment <coughs> called a carbon dioxide laser. Okay, and the settings are up to the treatment protocol that the provider sets. Sometimes when I do males, I'm very aggressive. When I do females, I'm less aggressive. When I do patients that are not bad, like a 20 year old, I don't have to be very aggressive at all, right? <laughs> the fourth thing that we do is extract the blood. We spin it down and put it in the centrifuge. And then we get all the growth factors in there. We concentrate because one of the things I want you guys to understand, if you go to the marketplace and research about it, they just apply it over the face. But 80% of that stuff is just salt water that's circulating in your blood, 80% of the stuff you extract is just salt water. It's useless, absolutely useless. So if you get this much stuff in a test tube that they're doing elsewhere and you apply it, what are you really doing? Nothing. And moreover, if you apply it on the face just topically, how do you know it's even being absorbed into the skin? Right? You just, I don't know, maybe it works, maybe it absorbs a little bit, but we don't know. Because if you apply something, you need to know that it absorbs into the skin to actually do something. Or is it just putting it and drying up and you're just feeling like, oh, it's okay, but it's really not. Are all these procedures done at one time or different? So, so right. So the question again, if the other, other side in here is, that are all these done at one time? Yes, absolutely, because we're trying to consolidate treatments all safely at one time. That's why this is another advancement in skincare because we are trying to treat, like I'll show you a slide actually, and this is a good time to see that because it will make sense to you guys. Yes, yes, yes. So I'll show you this. Yes. So if you look at this, right? So I want you guys to not worry about any terminology. I just want you to look at the picture, the cartoon of the picture. Okay, and I'm gonna explain it to you because if you get anything out of this, I hope you guys remember this picture, okay? This is the top of the skin that's facing the world. This is the deep part of the skin that's underneath the skin, correct? 
So when you do a carbon dioxide laser, you're just treating the top of the skin only right here. That's all you're doing. Nothing's happening down here, really. We don't know what's happening, but nothing much is happening. This is a needle. This is supposed to represent a needle with the micro needle. Okay? When this is going down, you're basically all you're creating is a very narrow hole in the skin. Very, very microscopic narrow hole in the skin. But you're not doing any or removing any cells at the top at all. Again, unidimensional, right? So, and all of this stuff that's kind of, you know, kind of hairy looking at the top, that's the stuff that you want to dust off the skin. That's the microblading stuff, right? So, and then when you treat this, you have to make sure that all of these complex things that are happening actually have what they need to heal properly. So if you apply it on the top here, I have no idea, even without doing this, is it being absorbed at all or not, right? So I need to somehow force that into the skin so that it's actually there after you create the injury to actually start to heal. So the first step we talked about takes off the top layer of the skin like this. The second thing that we do is the radio frequency so that all of these blood vessels that are flowing in here that you cannot see dislodge all those good cells called the pericytes of the stem cells that now are waiting to do something because they need to do something. And now they'll know what to do because there's an injury there. The third thing we're doing is that we are now ablating or burning off some bad sun-facing cells at the very top of the skin with the CO2 laser. So by chance, that if you're applying this and forcing into the skin, anything stays on the surface, it even at least absorbs better. Because now you've created a very controlled injury there. The fourth thing that we do again, use this micro needle here, and we can control the depth of this. Okay, we can control it. Do I want to go this deep, this deep, this deep, this deep, or even deeper? We can control that. So now I can plan for it. Right? I can plan and say, well, in this particular person, I only want to treat at this level because that's where the damage is. And one other thing I want you guys to remember here, I want you to look at this picture here. Just don't worry about the word, just look at the picture. This is the little box here, right? That's expanded here. So when people get wrinkles, right? This, this correlates to this area here, right here. All of this stuff, deeper, and everybody talks about collagen, right? This is where it is. But if this top skin is not tightly adhered to this, through here, to all of these connections, no matter how much collagen you have, you still are going to have all these wrinkles. So because it glides over and separates, and that's what causes the wrinkles. And one of the most interesting things I've read in a long time is that there was a patient with a condition called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. These people don't have good proteins in the skin, elastin and collagen and stuff like that. So a dermatologist back in the 80s or 90s used to treat her with microneedling back in the day when nobody knew about it almost every week. He did it for six or eight months. And he showed improvement because he just went very, very shallow here because he realized that this is what's detached. So if he can stimulate something to happen where these reattach together, the wrinkles are much, much smoother. So there's a lot of BS out in the marketplace. That's what is annoying in plastic surgery because there's so much BS. I kind of blame the marketing guys that are sitting there because oh. they ruined the market because everybody is a specialist in everything in the world, right? Everything is the greatest and the best in the world, but there's very little substance behind it. You really need to understand these things to be able to do a good job. How long do you think would be like the next treatment you would have to have? Six weeks. So I'm going to say once you get it done. Well, if you do a series, well, it depends again, right? It depends. It, uh, that's a very personal question. If you want to look your best, you're going to assess yourself. Do I look good? Do I, am I happy? If I'm not, what do I do? I want to hear that too, right? How long is it? Well, so this device here, right here, this is called a dermaprax system. So when you use that on the skin, it actually sucks the skin into the device. So there's a little bit of stretching. And when you stretch it, is when you poke a hole in the skin. And at the same time, it infuses those growth factors that we've gotten from the blood into the skin at the same time. So it's doing three things at one time. So that device here, actually, I don't know if there's a hat piece that is attached or not. It's over there, actually, near the filter. Where? So if you look at this device, I'll just show you right here. I'm not going to open it because it's expensive. Yes. Um, Do not. This device has an opening at the end of it. 
So when you go over the skin, it actually sucks the skin into the device, it stretches it, then it pokes a hole, and then this canister, this is the canister here, has all the stuff you've extracted, it's infusing it directly into the skin. So there is some stretching involved. Right there? Well, the same question that, you know, it depends on how you want to look. You know, if you're happy with the way you look, you don't. But if you like the way you look, then it's going to change a little bit. You come back and do more. Yeah. Speaking of BS, how do you relate the vampire patients to this? So, so it's, it's one of my personal missions, right? I'm glad you brought it up because I'm a very passionate person when it comes to this kind of stuff. It's one of my personal missions to eliminate vampires from this world. <laughs> because it's a bunch of BS. Uh, I'm not saying it's all BS. I'm saying that there's a lot of things that don't make sense in there. There's some. You have to give credit to that, that, that area of marketing because they have made people aware of this, right? You got to give credit where credit is due, but there's a lot of bogus science there. But I do give them credit for realizing there's potential there. They did the best they could, but we are elevating this conversation to a whole new level. Can this be done anywhere or specifically for the face? And so, so far, we've done this on the face, on the neck, and on the chest. Okay? I believe skin is skin as long as you know and understand skin. You can do it on the hands. You can do it really anywhere. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting, you know, now after I kind of feel comfortable with this, I'd love to do it on stretch marks. I'd love to do it for a lot of other reasons, as a matter of fact. I know I have a very dear patient, Jeannie, here that, you know, I'd love for her to say a couple of things because she's a unique patient as well, and thank you for being here. So she had a dog bite on her leg, and she came and she had traumatized for a long time with it, and we wanted to work with it. So would you like to share your experience with us? Um, sure, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I had an injury, a May. 18 or May 2018, I was walking my dog, another dog attacked myself, my dog, and then we did severe damage to my calf muscle. It required a certain emergency, three hour emergency surgery to put it back together. Um, and I, over the course of the, you know, the risk of infection and everything else I had to go through, it was a very traumatic experience for me. Um, and I didn't want to even consider going under the knife for a while. I talked to a couple plastic surgeons just didn't feel comfortable, I didn't feel safe with them. And then my GYN referred me to Dr. Kasuma, and then I started to feel like, okay, this is the guy. This is, and so we did a scar revision, fat grafting um, over this, this past summer, and then another, the, a, the CR, ART. F, sorry, the concentrated, group, yeah, the ART, <laughs> another fat grafting, and he talked me into doing well, there was some extra, so he put some on my face. So I, <laughs> that was great. Cool. That was the best cool. part. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, I gave him my youth back. I had gotten to a point where I just felt like it just, this injury had just like wiped me out. And I, had, I felt like it aged like five years. You could see by the facial pictures, which I'll let him show you before and after. But um, I'm still recovering. I mean, I could show you, but it looks way really better than it did. Um, but, you know, I like to wear skirts. I was a runner, so I had nice legs. You see that I thought I did. But he's giving me that confidence back to not be so insecure about it. And in the meantime, bringing up my face, so. Very happy. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, thank you so much. Thank you so much. The reason I wanted her to talk about because where else can you use it for? What else can you use it for? The principles are the same, right? Wound healing, skin care, all of these are similar principles, so you could really apply it anywhere you want, but you need to know what to apply where. So in her case, specifically, I needed to, new tissue to grow. In the other stuff that we're talking about, it was just basically make, make the skin look better. In her case, I really... Oh, I didn't, I didn't even mention that it wasn't just surface damage that I had. I had, um, I'm a teacher, I'm a CPA term teacher, and I had surface damage that I had math teacher, so I'm very analytical about everything. So I really, you know, analyzed everything when we were talking about the surger surgeries. And so anyway, I was on my feet, try teaching from a chair. I didn't realize how damaged I was, really, when I went back to teaching three months after the injury. But um, I would have muscle fatigue. I would have muscle spasms. I would have, you know, just, I would, my left side hurt because I was shifting my weight all the time. 
and it lasted for a whole year. The week before my surgery this past May, I was still in pain. Like I, I overdid it because I'm ending school and whatever, you know, the normal, pushing myself too far. The first week of school this year, I may teach some of your children, you know, maybe, mm -hmm. we'll see. Anyway, but the first week of school, I made it through Friday and I'm like, wait a second, I don't hurt anymore. <laughs> so that was, I, can, I attribute that to the, to the ART mm -hmm. for sure. Thank you. So, so I, we use yeah. bone marrow on her, you know, yeah. because oh, yeah. I needed to elevate to a different level. So again, you're trying to know your tissues, you know your problems, and you know your tools, and you're trying to apply it to that person specifically because you can't be a one-trick pony because everybody is unique, right? So in our case, I needed a lot more power, regenerative power than a blood would have. So in our case, again, she was a brave pioneer. She allowed me to get some bone marrow from her, from her, you know, back of the bone. It's Actually, it sounds more horrific than it is. It takes 10 minutes to do, it's very easy. It's just a needle. The patient was sleeping and she had no idea. You just put it into the bone, you extract it just like you extract it from a vein. It literally takes 10 minutes, no incisions, just a little needle. It's not that bad, okay? Um, and then you do the same thing that you did with the blood. You spin it down and now bone marrow is used, as you guys know, right? In cancer therapy to repopulate them, regrow everything. So that's what I wanted to use in our case. And so that's what we did. So the answer is, it's an exciting field. You could use it anywhere, and you know a lot of things are happening. I mean, they're growing for crying out loud lungs in the lab. I mean, they literally are growing lungs in the lab today. Uh, I don't know if it can be used in a real person, but it's possible. So, are you saying that scarring is something you might be able to address? Yes, with it? yes. So the areas of interest, right? I, I kind of have a. So I kind of have something here. I, these are the interests that I particularly have in this field: aesthetics, obviously, skin care volume with fat, healing process, etc. scar management. In women's health, it's another interesting area. You know, you know, I did another lady who had urinary incontinence, and I, I treated her, and she also sees improvement. So there's a big, big area here that I think you can improve, especially sexual health, you know, because after pregnancies, everything is loose and whatnot, and you can potentially regenerate that as well. And so we're doing that, so that's another area. Reconstruction in scars and burns, and especially in breast cancer patients who get radiation, you potentially could hopefully try to improve their skin quality there. You know, hair care, I still don't understand it. If it works, I'll be the first one. <laughs> but, but this would be a personal interest of mine uh, to, to, to perfect because I'm very, very interested in that. And fat grafting is a great area here, right? Because fat is the ultimate filler at the end of the day. It's your own stuff. It's got, like you said, in one cc, you have four million cells that are good cells potentially. We just don't know how to maximize the use of it yet, but when we figure it out, I think they're gonna wipe out all the companies and, you know, that do you know, over-the-counter fillers. It's really the best stuff available. So these are all the areas we wanna work in. What is the care afterwards? So the products that you would use after a moisturizer or Okay. So why don't we have maybe Katie kind of just talk about the post care for just a second? So so another thing that I want you guys to understand is this is a team approach, right? So I or Kim, you know, uh, who is a nurse practitioner, I we do some stuff in this, and some other stuff is done by the estheticians. So it's a team effort. So some of these things are really. Uh, done by Katie, so I'll have her just explain the post care. <laughs> 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 Can you use someone else? Can you use someone else? Okay, so for post care, we keep it pretty simple with a light cleanser, a serum to so keep you nice and hydrated, and then an SPF. So that's what it looks very, like. Very, very simple. Yeah. So is that the same product you use with anyone? Or only yes. That treatment? For now, for the first set, that's all we've used and it's been fine. You know, some people need more of something, like some people just suck up all of this moisture, what we call the hydrating serum. They just suck it up because they need it. So they may need more of it, but we didn't have to substitute or I wouldn't buy that right now. Yeah. You could? Absolutely. Yes. Is it included? Or it, it is. It's included in the price when you buy a package, yes. That's my favorite thing. Every day. Purchase this from across the snap. Here, just what you said. I don't know. I would like to tell other people about this. However, I don't want to be that person. Yeah. 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 I don't want to be that
Can you give us kind of a synopsis? There's a trifold brochure in your bag that explains Actually, no, they all have one on their chair. So chair. you have a trifold, you can open up and it talks a little bit about all it does. And, okay. 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 Okay.
that's enriched with the stuff we're talking about at the same time. And I would do the art facial at the same time. So that essentially, you know, addressing the three things that we do with facial recombination, right? Skin laxity, volume, and skin health. So that would be what I'd love to do in the very near future. So uh, go ahead, ask your question. Why have you learned with respect to not perfecting it, but learning as you go with the seventeen patients? What have we learned? Yes. So you know, I, I'll show you. Okay. What we've learned is this: what to expect from the treatment. It seems to peak usually around four to five weeks after the treatment, although you start noticing a change in about two weeks. We recommend three sessions, but can vary depending on the person and the person's need, because the, one of the most common questions we always get is that, how many do I need? You know, all of plastic surgery is subjective, right? There's no measuring scale in the world that is going to make somebody happy if they look in the mirror and don't feel happy personally. I can show them all the before and after pictures I want, I can show, tell them all the signs I want, but at the end of the day, until they look in the mirror and they feel happy and good, that's truly the measure of success. So when people ask me, how many do I need? Well, it depends on how good you want to look. 